What's the story, Warned and Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of 90 Day Fiance The Other Way, Season 4, Episode 2, To Have Peace, There Must Be Strife. Now, let's talk about our newest couple, which is Nicole and uh, Mahmood. So, Nicole is 38 years old from Los Angeles, and Mahmood is 26 years old from Cairo, Egypt. Nicole supports herself by delivering food and reselling clothes. Uh, she's very into clothes and fashion. She worked in the fashion design industry for a while, but she didn't like it. Um, she's been uh, everywhere like a nomad. She's lived in various states, done various things, you know, the type of person, right? So eventually she got into spirituality and meditation, and this led her to Egypt. She was in Egypt for a while, and on her last day in Egypt before coming back to America, she met Mahmoud. Um, they vibed instantly. Everything went so well between them that she even considered not coming back to America and staying in Egypt, but she thought better of it. She came back to the United States. Soon after, he proposed to her, and she ended up going back to Egypt to get married over there. So they got married over there in Egypt. I think eventually the goal was to come live in the United States, but um, their marriage was very tumultuous. They were married for about 11 months when she decided that she wanted, to, wanted a divorce. She didn't want to live in Egypt. She said that the culture shock was too much for her. And they argued all the time. They argued constantly. And the arguments basically revolved around the fact that he expected her to be more of a, what he would his expectations of a wife, basically, you know, he wants a traditional Muslim woman and she was not that she was not trying to be that. And so that, that was a huge problem in their relationship. Um, I don't know if he expected her to conform to, um, to conform to Islam, but he did want her to dress a certain way. Like he wanted her to be always covered up. She couldn't hug other men, um, follow all of that stuff. The things that we're all very, very familiar with, but for whatever reason, the people on this show have no clue about. So because of the fact that, you know, she felt like there were so many rules to follow. She couldn't be herself. She couldn't be what he wanted, what he expected. She told him after 11 months of marriage that she wanted a divorce and she withdrew his visa application and she ended up blocking him and she came back home to the United States. So this is where we're at. Supposedly, they're separated on their way to divorce. So when we see her, she's meeting up with a couple of her friends and she tells her two friends that she's going to be going back to Egypt to be with her husband. And her friends were surprised because as far as they knew, that marriage was practically over and she was never going back to Egypt again. So they said that Nicole is very secretive. So they didn't even know exactly why she separated from her husband to begin with. So they asked her, why did you two even separate? And she tells them, you know, because of the fact that he wanted to change her into what he expected in a wife, um, just your usual Muslim standards. Um, he had a problem with how she dressed, you know, she had to dress a certain way, the whole thing about hugging other men, all of these things, you know, she couldn't handle. So the friends said that my mood needs to accept her for who she is. Well, what about her accepting him for what he is, for who he is? And the fact that she's going to be going back to his country. Okay. And so she's entering his territory. So what about her accepting him for who he is? So Nicole says that she's going to be reconciling because she really misses her husband. She loves him because he's pure. He's honest and stands for what he believes in. So she loves the fact that he stands for what he believes in, except for when he stands you know, for what he believes in his culture and his religion and his tradition. That's when she has a problem with it. And she also says that he loves her like she's never been loved before, because I guess she's used to dating starving artists and uh, Mahmoud is completely different from that. And so she loves how he makes her feel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I don't know exactly what's going to be different this time around, because she's still very stubborn in what she will and won't do. He's still going to be following his traditions of his country that she's going to be living in. So I don't understand why they're going back into this, because they were FaceTiming each other and it didn't seem like neither one of them was going to be budging in what they believed in the biggest area of contention in their marriage is that he is, is her clothes and how she dresses so she understood that she had to be covered up so she was doing all of that well, now the problem is he doesn't want her wearing tight clothes. And so she's like, you know what? You're always adding something. There's always something else that I have to follow. Just when I thought that I knew what the gameplay was, you bring in something else. And he tells her, 
I've always told you that you cannot wear tight clothes. Yes, you have to be covered up and the clothes that you wear cannot show your body parts or the shape of your body. So you cannot wear tight clothing and you've always known this because I've told you this before. So I'm thinking to myself, 90 Day Fiance, TLC, whoever's in charge, here we go again. Now, the problem is maybe... Nicole has been living under a rock and she has no idea how it is to be married to a traditional Muslim man because she's never watched the show ever, even though she signed up for it, has completely no idea on what's expected of her. if She's going to marry a traditional Muslim man and live in a traditional Muslim country. OK, fine. Maybe it's all brand new to her. But TLC, it's not brand new to us. This isn't new to us. So it's basically the same exact storyline, but different characters. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I don't want to see an American woman acting shocked and surprised about needing to cover up her body, needing to, you know, like how it was with, um, I forgot their names, but it was the, the black girl from Florida with the braces and the long hair. And she was, uh, where was it? I forgot what country her man lived in, but I think it was some North African country. And she was like so confused and bewildered about how she's going to have to dress and all the things that she's going to have to follow. It was like, oh my God, why do I have to dress like this? And why can't I do that? And why do I have to do this? And it's like, how do you not know these things? If nothing else, if you're not culturally aware of what's going on in other parts of the world, you just have no clue. Do you at least watch the shows that y'all are signing up for? And have y'all seen people in your similar situation going through these similar problems? Why are we confused? So either you're going to get with the gameplay and do what's expected of you. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so bad with names. Like the one girl did. Um, she was the girl. I don't know where she was from, but she went to, I don't even know where he lived, but they were going to go live in, um, they were going to go live in, I, was it Iraq or Kuwait? I don't know where they were going to go live. They were going to go live in some country. Oh, Syria. They're going to go live in Syria because her family was really against her moving to Syria. They're going to go live in Syria. He was going to be a dentist, I think. And she fell in line with what was expected of her. I mean, she loved her husband. She's going to go live in his country. And she was perfectly okay with putting on the Muslim garb, covering herself up. She had no problem. Whatever that was expected of her, she went along with it. She didn't fight it at all. She just fell in line. So these other women on this show who are with Muslim men, like if you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to like it. You don't have to accept it. So why not get with a non-Muslim person or get with a Muslim person who's not a traditionalist like that other couple where she was a lot older than him, like, I don't know, 20 years older than him or something. And he allowed her to dress however she wanted to dress. He had no issue with how she dressed. His only issue was her tattoos because they were going to go out one night and she was going to wear like a short sleeve shirt or something. And her sleeve, her, she had a complete sleeve was going to be exposed. And he was like, no, I, I, that's where I draw the line. You cannot show your tattoos. So she had to put on a jacket to cover up her tattoos. And, um, but he was not very traditionalist. He allowed her to dress however she wanted to dress. So the ones who are so upset and all in a tizzy because their men are expecting them to dress a certain way and live a certain way, just go find somebody who's not a traditionalist. And if you're going to go live in his country, you're going to have to follow the ways of that country. I don't, I just, I'm just, I don't understand why people are still confused in this day and age and why TLC keeps showing us the same exact story, but just changing the players. I'm not interested in that. I am not interested in watching an entire season of Nicole and her husband fighting because she does not want to be covered up or she does not want to wear skin tight clothing or she's upset because he won't let her walk the streets of Cairo in a string bikini and she doesn't understand what the hell's going on. I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I'm this this close to having to fast forward any scenes with Nicole because it's just it's idiotic to me it's absolutely idiotic how you don't want to you, why you're so confused and you don't want to do what's expected of you it, I, I 
I'm, I'm over that. Let's move on to Danielle and Johan. So she finally arrives at his family's home. There's 16 people living in that house. And out of those 16 people, 10 of them are Johan's nephews. He's got 10 nephews. I mean, that XY chromosome is strong in that family. So the family, absolutely, they adore Nicole. I think when she arrived, all the kids ran up to her and gave her a hug. They absolutely adore Nicole. Um, I'm hoping that it's genuine, but is it because they think that, oh, this is our, our, our ticket to living a better life? Uh, so that's why they're so happy to see her all the time and they accept her with open arms. So... So after spending time with the family, Danielle and Johan, they go off to go be by themselves and they're having a conversation about where they're going to live. Okay, this is getting tiring. This is getting tiring. We had to deal with this through a 90 Day Fiance, a Love in Paradise. Now we're going to deal, we have to deal with this, a 90 Day Fiance, the other way of where are we going to live? Is it going to be New York? Is it going to be the Dominican Republic? Um... Obviously, I put a lot of blame on, on Danielle because she had, you know, fed him a whole bunch of lies about how they were going to go back to New York, but she knew that she never wanted to go back to New York. So she completely misled him. So I'm on Johan's side on that, but luckily they decided to compromise. So Johan said, if things are going well for us here, then I don't have a problem staying here. But if we start struggling here, then I'm expecting us to move to New York. And he also says in his confessional that living here is nice when you're on vacation, but when this is your everyday reality, it's completely different. And that's what she's not understanding. She's 42 or 43 years old. And I don't know if she's seriously expecting her everyday life in the Dominican to be like it's vacation over there. Like just, you know, I don't know what she's expecting when the people that are living there are telling her that life is hard, but she doesn't want to listen to that because she thinks she knows it all. Anyways, moving on. So the next morning uh, we see them and she's going through her 10 step beauty ritual. And after that, um, she, they go visit a butcher shop that Johan owns. And I was like, where did he get the money to buy a butcher shop? Because he talks about how he's always struggling. You don't make enough money in the Dominican Republic. You barely make enough money, you know, to survive for a day. But he, I guess he was saving up his money. I don't know. If he saved up enough money to buy a butcher shop, then Johan is a lot more financially savvy than what Danielle thinks. So they go visit the butcher shop that she, that he owns and the meat is like all up there on the counter, not covered up, not refrigerated, just slabs of meat, raw meat on the counter. And there's flies everywhere, sausage hanging from the ceiling, nothing's refrigerated. So Danielle is like, what the hell is going on here? Like, why is the meat exposed to all of this, these flies and it's not refrigerated? And he's like, the meat is cold. The meat is fine. It's cold. And so he takes her hand and he presses her hand against the raw meat. And I think she's a vegetarian. And so that completely grossed her out. Is she a vegetarian? Anyways, that completely grosses her out. And she's like, you don't understand. The meat has to be refrigerated so that it doesn't grow bacteria. And he says, there's no bacteria in this meat. And so he's trying to tell her, this is how we do it here in the Dominican. This is how it is. I put the meat out on display for everybody to see it. If I refrigerate it, they can't see it. So that's why I put it on the counter so that the customers can see what they want. So then she's asking him, so let me see the books the books that you're keeping, your accounting. So he takes out his little handwritten notebook and shows it to her. And so she's flipping through it and she's like, what the hell is all this? Um, she can't make heads or tail of his accounting or what's going on in that notebook. So she leaves, comes back with her, um, her laptop. And so she starts showing him like how to use a spreadsheet, Excel, uh, quick book pro, whatever the hell you call it. And, um, they're not seeing eye to eye. So she's trying to tell him that from the numbers that you're giving me, this is not going to work because you're spending a whole lot more than what you're making. You're not making any profit. You're going further and further into debt. This is not going to work. And so Johan is upset because he thought that, she was going to be proud of him because she's always like, you need to make more money. You need to make more money. You need to help me out more financially. So he goes off and he gets this butcher shop and she's still complaining. And so he's like, what the hell do you want from me? You wanted me to make more money. You wanted, you wanted me to be more financially involved. And so I started my own business and she's still not happy. So she's like, you know what? I don't know how we're going to be able to afford an apartment and going through IVF or a donor eggs or whatever the hell to have a baby girl. Hang up that idea about 
donor eggs and IVF. Girl, hang that idea up. If that's what you want, girl, you need to go back to America. You need to go find a more uh, affordable city to live in so you can start saving up money for this damn baby. Because I don't see how that's going to happen with you living in the Dominican I, and you running a little tiny yoga studio or yoga on the beach or whatever the hell you're trying to do. I don't see how that's going to happen. So um, she says that the way he runs this butcher shop is like how someone, how a kid would run a lemonade stand. Um, that's how much respect she has put into his uh, business acumen. So Johan claims he knows what he's doing. He says he's in charge of all of this. This is how it's done in the Dominican. She cannot expect things to be done here the way that things are done in Nueva York. It's just that you can't compare the two things are completely different here. He understands his community. He understands how businesses are run here. So this is how it's done. I don't know if Johan is, a, is going to be a successful businessman or not. I have no idea. But he's trying to let her know that I don't need your MacBook Pros, your spreadsheets, your Excels. I don't need that. I know what I'm doing. And so she's like, okay, fine. You know, she gets really sarcastic. Okay, fine. You're a great businessman. You're gonna make a whole bunch of money. You don't need me. You're fine without me. She closes up her laptop and she walks out. And I'm like, Nicole, this is what happens when you marry someone that you barely know and you want to plan an entire future with this man and you barely know him. And I'm like, do you think just because you're American that he's just gonna automatically do what you say? I mean, people in other countries do things their own way live their own life just because y'all anyways you married a man that you didn't even know okay you married a man that you didn't even know and now you're upset because you're getting to know the real Johan and you kind of don't like what you're seeing but now you're stuck because you're married moving on to Chris and Jamie so they're facetiming each other before Chris um, has to leave for Bogota Colombia they're very excited about seeing each other etc cetera, etc cetera. the next day her family drives her to the drives her to the airport She's scared. She's nervous. She's excited. She's happy. So it's a lot of emotions running through her and their whole entire relationship has taken place online. So this is going to be the very first time that they meet and the first time that they're going to actually, you know, have to conduct this relationship in real life. And she's also worried about how Jamie is going to deal with her narcolepsy. So Jamie on the other side of the world, she is getting, um, well, not the other side of the world, just a little bit below North America. She is getting herself done up. She's getting all beautified for her woman and got her hair done, her makeup and the, her makeup person and her hair person, uh, they're actually really good friends of hers. And so she's telling them how um, Chris is going to be coming into Columbia and she's very excited. And they're going to be getting married. And her friends were surprised. They're like, well, we didn't know that you were going to be getting married. And she's like, yes, we're getting married. And then she tells them the whole background about how Chris had disappeared for a while she had no way of getting in touch with her so she just moved on and found another woman but she was still in love with Chris and so the friends when they're talking to the camera in the little interview they're like well we don't really know about this because if Chris has this habit of disappearing uh yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be a problem so they're kind of like a little bit apprehensive about this whole entire relationship and also the fact that they're gonna have to get married in nine days so we didn't see much of Chris and Jamie uh just know that Chris is about to arrive and we'll see whether or not they can get this wedding done in nine days. Moving on to Gabriel and Isabel. So Gabriel is our trans man and Isabel is our single mother living in Colombia. So he's preparing for his trip to Colombia. His mother Marie is helping him pack. So his mom is very supportive of Gabriel. She's very supportive of her son. And the only issue that the mother has is, do they have to get married so fast? And he tells his mother, look, once I arrive there, I have like only a certain amount of days um, before I have to leave and come back. So I have to make something happen if I want to stay there with her. So they're on a time crunch. I think he said 90 days. Or could it have been a I know he said that you have 180 days before you have to renew your visa or leave and then try to come back. Uh, but they have a certain amount of time to get things done. So it's good to know, though, that the mother is supportive of him, except the part about getting married so quickly. So Isabel, we get to meet her finally. Excuse me. She's 34 years old. She's a single mother of two children, a 16 year old daughter and an 11 year old son. So. 
she's had very problematic relationships with the fathers of her children and other men in her life. She tends to date men who are very, uh, they call it machismo, which I'm assuming is like controlling, uh, misogynistic, you know, men who feel like, you know, a woman has to stay in her place, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the kind of men that she's used to dating. So Gabriel to her was a breath of fresh air because he saw her as an equal, treated her really, really nice, but girl, yeah, it was really wonderful and nice when y'all just met and you know you put your best foot forward when you just meet someone but you don't really like know them know them now what bothers me about Isabel is the fact that she's got these two kids and I feel like you know when they start involving the children it gets really hectic for me because the children are also a part of this whole process with you and the ups and downs of the relationship the kids are experiencing that and it's because the adults in the relationship they don't want to take their time to really get to know each other they want to hurry up and rush 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 oh I met you I'm in love with you I can't live without you let's get married and it's like y'all don't even really know each other and then there's children involved now if there aren't any kids involved do what the hell you want to do but when there's children involved I start getting kind of nervous so she's very close to her children um and she likes okay and her daughter Sarah we meet her daughter Sarah and they're having a conversation about Gabriel and Sarah loves Gabriel she has no problem with Gabriel whatsoever now Isabel found out that Gabriel was trans when she went through Gabriel's social media. And of course, he posts a lot about his trans journey. And that's how she found out. So when she asked him about it, I think she asked him about it. I don't think he told her about it himself initially. I think she found out on social media and then she asked him about it and he admitted that yes you know he is trans and she says that you know that was fine with her she was okay with that she's because I don't see you as a woman I see you as a full man like you know and, and that's how I see him too like you can't tell at all or as they say you can't clock him at all that this person was born xx instead of or was born um xx instead of xy you think that this is a full you know, true blue male. And so she says, I see you as a man, everything about you, your body, your face, everything about you is male. So yeah, I don't have a problem with it at all. Now, the problem is going to be her youngest child, her 11 year old son, because she's decided that she's not going to tell him just yet, because he's too young to really understand. I don't think she really has to tell him at all. Because I mean, Gabriel presents himself to the world as a man and I don't think she would have to tell her son at all until like if he starts asking questions but I don't know I don't think she has to tell her kid at all now the other problem is her parents so she doesn't know how her parents are going to take it um and she wonders if their reaction is going to somehow affect her relationship with Gabriel and she might have to choose either her family or Gabriel so that's the problem that she has but luckily her daughter has no issues with Gabriel at all in fact her daughter's looking forward to Gabriel arriving in Colombia which is good you know so far so good and as long as they can keep their relationship even keel that's fine but if they start going through some mess and then the kids have to see this and the kids are like don't know what the hell's going on I don't know moving on to Jen and Rishi now we met Jen last week she's like the dreamer you know she's like the hopeless romantic um, she rushes into relationships way too fast. Uh, she got married way too soon previously and, um, she doesn't know how to slow down and she falls for very good looking men who are not about commitment. And like I said, in my last week's review, why is Rishi any different? Because he's a good looking man. And what we found out in this episode is kind of questionable if he's willing to commit to her. So she's finally going to be moving to India. She's having one of her final dinners with her family, which is her mom, her brother, and her sister-in-law. And the mom says that she always knew that Jen was going to end up leaving and to go far away because ever since she was young, she's just been the type, I guess, just been very um, curious about the world and always has traveled her whole life and just love this, you know, international lifestyle. So her mom always knew that this day would come where Jen was going to be leaving to go live somewhere else. So... Jen tells her family um, over dinner that Rishi's family do not know that they are actually engaged. 
So her sister-in-law says, well, do they know that y'all are together romantically? Like, do they know that you're his girlfriend? And she says, well, he's introduced me as his friend. Jen, you are 46 years old. And you are okay with having this man introduce you to his family as one of the homies? That's okay with you, girl? That's a huge red flag. Either he's too immature to be mature about his relationships with his, with his family, or it's going to be some, um, what's up, Jenny and submit issues where the family wants him to be like, you know, whatever they don't, they don't, they're not going to accept anybody that's not Indian. They want him to marry a certain type of woman. They don't want him to marry the, and she's older than him as well. Just like with submit and, and Jenny, even though she's not that much older than him, I think it's like a 10 year difference or something. Um, all this uh, y'all once again, TLC look, I can't do this. I cannot do same story, different people. I don't want it because if this is going to be a situation where the family's like, no, we're not going to accept her because she's an American woman and I can't do it. And she's older than you. And can she have babies? I cannot do it because these shows, these franchises come back, they run back to back. It's like 90 day fiance, 90 day fiance, love in paradise, 90 day fiance, life after lo love, 90 day fiance, happily ever after 90 day fiance. All of these franchises run back to back to back. And I don't want to see the same story in every single franchise, but you're just switching up the faces. I could be speaking too soon because she hasn't arrived in India yet. But the fact that he has not, because that's how it was with Samit and Jenny. When Samit and Jenny first met, no, when she first came to India and was living with them, living with Samit and his family and his family's home, Samit's parents thought that they were just homies. They had no idea that Samit and Jenny were actually together as a couple and doing couple things in the family home. So the fact that his family does not, Rishi's family does not know that they're together. She's American. She's older. I'm getting a whiff, a whiff of Samit and Jenny, and I'm not liking it. So the family is very concerned. Her family is very concerned about the fact that he hasn't introduced her as his uh, fiance. So um, he, she says that Rishi has told his family that he does not want a uh, a prearranged marriage, an arranged marriage. He wants to marry for love. He wants a love marriage. And so the problem is his family might be okay with that, him choosing his own wife, but they might expect him to choose an Indian wife and not an American wife. So the fact that she's American, that might, you know, be a problem. Oh, here we go. So now the big question is if his family does not accept her, will Rishi still go through with marrying her? At this point, I really don't care. At this point, I hope that he says, no, my family does not accept you. Get the hell out of my face. Just to make this a little bit more interesting because an entire season of trying to convince his parents, his parents that they're in love and they want to be together. I can't do it. So later on, she meets up with two of her friends and her friends are not having it at all. They're very, very vocal about the fact that they are not approving of this situation that Jen has found herself in. Her friend said that she rush rushes into relationships and Rishi is no different. She rushed into that just as fast as she's rushed into her other previous relationships. Her method of choosing men hasn't changed either. The only difference is where she lives in a whole nother country, but her method method methodology of how she chooses partners is exactly the same. Um, and she, and she'll move in a heartbeat for a man, according to her friends. She's lived in like so many different States. Um, she'll move in a heartbeat to go be with a man. That's how fickle she is. So I'm like thinking to myself and then she acts so naive when she's talking to her friends over dinner she was acting just so naive her friends were like um her friends I don't know what her friends were saying but her her reaction was like no y'all don't understand he's different and this is really love y'all you know her reaction her her demeanor is like very childlike and oh and so I'm like girl are you trolling us is this a game are you trolling us because this cannot be for real 
I mean, you you cannot be this naive and this stupid and this, you know, airheadish, Jen. So the friends say that um, his social media is a red flag because he's got 11,000 followers. And so there's a, he, and he, yeah, his social media is a red flag because he's got so many people following him. And also because her picture is not there. There's nowhere. You cannot tell at all that Rishi is engaged to anybody because his pictures don't show that at all. And she doesn't know because she doesn't follow him on social media. Um, so the plan is, so one of her friend, her blonde friend comes up with this idea to catfish Rishi. Uh, so she's going to pose as whatever, and she's going to reach out to him. She's going to DM him and see how he's going to respond. This is also a recycled storyline. This is very familiar, uh, to Alina and Steven. Um, I don't know what season it was. She was from Russia. He was from, I don't know where. And, um, she had her friends try to catfish Steven to see if he was going to bite. And he bit, he bit. He bit all right. And so they're going to do the same thing here for like, here's another recycled plot. Like, I don't understand why we're doing this. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to say, friends, leave your friends alone when it comes to their damn relationships. I understand you want to protect your friend and you don't want your friend to be broken hearted. But I've always said this, the heart wants what the heart wants. It doesn't matter how many friends come and tell Jen that this is not the guy for you. He's horrible. He's this. The heart wants what the heart wants. The only way that Jen is going to look out for Jen is when she hits rock bottom with Rishi. Other than that, her friends just need to be very supportive of her, not necessarily of the relationship or of him, but her friends Friends just need to support her and just give her like very surface type advice like girl you know hope everything works out keep your eyes and ears open and just leave it at that this whole thing of oh I'm gonna go into his dms and I'm gonna see if he's gonna respond to me then I'm gonna report back to you and like and then the friend also said that she didn't even she did not even attend Jen's last wedding because she was so opposed to Jen marrying that guy sure enough it was a bad marriage it didn't last a full two years but if your friend is happy support them in their happiness it doesn't mean that you're co-signing into them making stupid decisions but you can't stop it so if you can't stop your friend from doing what they want to do and you don't want to lose them as a friend just be there as their backbone as their sounding board the shoulder to cry on and that's it but don't go into like well I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that to keep you from being with who you want to be with okay let me get off my soapbox so the friend ends up facetiming Rishi and so she not facetiming she ends up getting into his dms so she facetimes Jen to tell her what the results are so she says that she reached out to Rishi in his dms and she gave him some kind of compliment like you know hey you're really good looking blah 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 so he responds back with do we know each other and she says no but I just wanted to let you know that I looked through all your your pictures on your on your page and you're a very good looking guy you're very attractive and then he asked her um or did he ask her he asked her where are you from and she said London and then he left the chat so then she tells Jen that is such a big red flag Jen that is such a big red and Jen is like what's the red flag because he asked me where I'm from he asked me a female as attractive as I am he asked me where I'm from and that should tell you tell her what girl you're doing the most you're putting 20 on 10 I need you to scale it back a bit Rishi may not be the guy for her he might be the biggest player we've ever seen but what you're talking about what you're bringing to the table I don't understand I'm not getting it like I'm not getting it at all she goes why would he ask me where I'm from why does he even care why did he even respond it might girl it might be girl I need you to relax he left the chat okay granted he should have said hey uh, uh, you know things for your interest but I'm engaged I'm about to be married yeah in a perfect world he would have said that but he still left the chat he didn't send nudes okay he wasn't asking for nudes so anyways so Jen was like, I'm not going to break up with my fiance because he asked you where you were from. I'm just not going to do it. It's not going to happen. So the friend was like, okay, well, I wish you all the best. And, um, you know, I'm still here for you and whatever, whatever. And so Jen was like, okay, thanks. And that was the end of that. <laughs> It was a good episode. It really was. 
Um, I just, I'm just tired of the same exact scenarios being played out season after season after season. I'm really tired of it. I don't mind Johan and, um, and Danielle because that's kind of different. Nicole and Muhammad, uh, that's a rerun. Chris and Jamie, I like that. That's different. Of course, I like Gabriel and Isabel. That's different. Jen and Rishi, that's a rerun. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. And I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.